In this movie, we take a look at one of the palettes we haven't yet, the last one in the series, and that is the style palette right over here on the right-hand side. The style palette is how you assign colors to both the interior of any shape, but also to any lines that you have, whether the lines are filled with color or not. You can control line width, you can control special effects like brushes that are applied to it. So I've already inserted just a plain old uh, basic little rectangle here, but before we get into that, I wanted to call your attention to a couple things that sometimes is frustrating for people when they first start working in Anime Studio Pro. That is that you can look over here and even if you use your selection tool, remember that's the keyboard shortcut G, I can select this shape and the colors do not update over here on the right hand side. You'll see up right at the very top that you've got a big and bold words here that says defaults for new shapes. That means that if I was to draw another shape right now it would fill with white and have a line quality or line color of black. In order to actually change the colors of any shape in your scene you have to first select that with the fill tool. You come over here the keyboard shortcut for that for select shape is Q. I'll come back and select this shape now and then I know that it's active to be worked with because it fills up with this little checkerboard pattern. At this point I can go ahead and go in and change the characteristics of this shape but you have to always select your shapes first with the fill selection tool before you can do anything with the style palette over here on the right. At this point with this shape selected I can go ahead and name it. And I'll name it something very original like red rectangle and as soon as I hit the enter key, look, it kicked out of the style palette and now we're back to our default. So with my tool selected already, I'll have to come back in here and choose that. And it looks like I spelled red rectangle instead of rectangle. You just can't get good help these days. So if I don't want to kick myself out of here, the way to avoid doing that and what I did to kick myself out was enter or hit the return key or the enter key on the keyboard, you can press the tab key on your keyboard and what that does is take you to the next field and keeps this shape and the style palette active for that shape. We went right down here to line width. I could go ahead and enter another value in there if I wanted to for something like 2. We can change the color. We can add brushes if I wanted to do that. We can add special effects. And we'll be covering all these different areas in detail as we get into our projects and then we start drawing shapes in our next section with the drawing tools. So essentially those important things are something I wanted to call to your attention first. The other nice thing is that up here under your shapes pull down menu is that you can select any shape you want to change the effect on right over here and hop right to it. That is a huge time saver and can prevent you from jumping in and out of your scene with the selection tool. You can come right up to the shapes palette and work with that. Adding brushes is as simple as clicking on the no brush icon right here. You have an option of brushes you can include. I'll pick one. You get a little bit of a preview and let me pull that up so you can see it. This dialog box, this modal dialog box appears in the center of your monitor when you activate it. And I've got a larger monitor than the active space we're working on. So all my dialog boxes appear down here in the lower right hand corner. At this point you can control some variables we'll talk about later as well. But once I accept this, we'll see that gosh, there's no change here. Well, this is a case where if you want to preview some of the things you're doing over here in your style palette, you need to come down to your workspace area and select your display quality pop-up. You notice that as we do that, we have some quick selects for low, medium, and high. I usually max everything out, and the one thing we're not seeing right now is brushes, and I want to see anti-aliasing as well. By selecting that and then simply clicking off of this modal box, then all of a sudden this has been updated and now I can see that the effect of that brush being applied and it's fairly subtle right now. I'm going to come back to my shapes pull down, select red rectangle, and let's increase our line width to something like 8. I'll click off that or hit the return key to terminate that session and now look we've got this fuzzy very naturalistic looking line over here. Additionally this is when we can add gradients if we want to do that. We've got a special layer for that all sorts of neat stuff and we can create specific styles and save those styles and apply them to subsequent shapes that we want to draw later on. I'll click off of this object, make sure it's not selected. 
I want to point your attention to the fact I'd mentioned that defaults for new shapes, if you know you're going to be drawing multiple shapes like this, you do have the ability to set all those characteristics right now. And then every subsequent shape you draw is going to inherit those characteristics. For example, if I wanted the next item that I was going to draw to be something in the uh, green range, let me pull up that modal dialog box. I'll click inside this color area, that's the one I want. I could enter values if I'm matching specifically for web display, or I can enter the hexachrome color combination or designator down here. I won't take time to explain all those. If you work with web stuff, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Normally, remaining in RGB is just fine. Same thing for the line color. I could go ahead and select this and say, no, I want something that's a little more blue, possibly darker, and select OK. For a brush, I'll go ahead and say, oh, let's check that same brush. Let me pull that up so you can see that. And that's fine. But now every time I draw a shape subsequently, these items in the style palette will be drawn with the shape. And there they go. We've got a line width of one. If I come up to my shapes palette, you'll see that nothing selected, and it's because I haven't named this shape. I need to do it with the shape selection tool. So there's a brief introduction into the style palette. The last movie in this section is going to be with your preferences and how you can adjust your work face or work interface, and then we'll get right into making stuff with Anime Studio.